Well, good day, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Well, this is part five of Joe's Pinhole Cameras. Yes, this started out as a day-long session that my friend and fellow camera maker Ethan Moses conducted about a month or so ago, where we uh, basically sat down and reviewed almost all of the homemade cameras that I've built over the last 20, 25 years. And now we're getting down to another interesting category of camera. Technically, they're pinhole cameras. Uh, they don't use lenses. They use just openings in the front of the box. But what these cameras are, are what I call pixelator cameras. Stay tuned. Um, in the course of designing all these ideas, I came up with the idea of the pixelator cell. And what the pixelator idea is, basically is if you were to, well, philosophically it came about from the mid-2000 era. Digital cameras were still not as good as some film cameras. Mm -hmm. You still had a lot of pixelation mm -hmm. in like low-end video, like VGA quality video and sure. stuff. So pixelation was a phenomenon or an attribute of digital imaging back then. And I thought to myself it would be so cool to make an analog optical camera that made pixelation. Mm -hmm. They pixelated on purpose. You have a grid of pixels, of cells, and in this case, they're half inch roughly cells. And you can see from behind here, this is just that gridded material like that. I think it's the light baffle stuff or whatever. And you have a projection screen on one end of it, and the film is on the, on the open end of the cell material behind it. And you project an image onto the projection screen. So this diagram shows the cross-section of one of the pixelator cells. So on the right side, you have a translucent projection screen. You have an image from a pinhole aperture projecting a coherent image onto the front of this screen. The light from that coherent image bounces around and averages itself out by the time it gets to the back of the screen, ideally. So you have this some intermediate level of gray, sort of the average of all the tones of that coherent image, available at the back, the open side of the cell in the back, where you have a piece of photo paper. So all of these separate pixel cells form a pixelated image made up of squares, that are composed of the averages of the light from the coherent image on the front of the cell. It's funny to me that um, you've wound, wound up using something very similar to like a light grid to get hard light out of a softbox. Yes. Um, and just made it yeah. uh, into a device to make a garbled image. <laughs> yes, exactly. He's going backwards, folks. Backwards in time. Ooh, I like this eyeball shutter. <laughs> the, nice. Yeah, the eyeball shutter. So this one used a grid. This is that sewing mesh, right? And then I, I used some spray adhesive and I put some wax paper on the front side. So the image from the, it's no longer a pinhole. It's more like an eighth of an inch or however big your cell is. That's how big the hole can be. It projects an image onto here and then each one of those cells gets averaged into an average gray level. And uh, in this case, you would put the mesh down here, you put your sheet of paper and sandwich it on a piece of foam and a piece of plywood, cover it up, and you're good to go. And Joe, did you wind up shooting a lot with this? Some, I did, yeah. I have some test images. Never quite happy with the images. Oh, you have to have some stickers with interesting symbology. Seems like not the camera you would take on vacation. No, this is a <laughs> one-shot camera, and it produces very low-resolution pixelated images. Uh, this guy here was a, oh yeah, this one, yeah, hmm, I remember this. So this one, the, the pixel grid is made of cardboard that I had to hand cut. Oh, Every geez. one of those strips made the slots, interlocked them. There is a sheet of uh, drafting vellum in the front of that, that's the projection grid, and then the back of that is where the paper was put into. That looks like a day's worth of mat knife. Work. It is. It's an F50 pixelator camera. And again, it's a fairly fairly big hole, like a maybe three millimeters mm -hmm. size hole. What's interesting about it is the only way I know to make an analog pixelated image <laughs> uh, using one of... the pixel the pixelator principle. Yeah. 
<laughs> Not to be confused with Hammer yes. Skills Pixelator, which is an yes. excellent product for digitizing your film. Yes, exactly. It's totally different. In an unpixelated way. But but I probably thought of it the name before he did. But who knows? Maybe someone else oh, did. Oh, for sure. Hamish yeah, is like my age. But uh, yeah, oh yeah. So you also need the eyeball shutter. I think that's one of the coolest details of all of these. I think <laughs> I would like to put an eyeball uh, laser engraved. On oh yes, you got to. Name. You're you're you can take the idea. I'll give you permission to use the eyeball. Okay. Shutter. So when I was in the process of building the pixelator camera, I had to build a prototype, and this plastic box of one of these little boxes you get 35 millimeter slides back from the lab and then uh, this is obviously uh, Barks root beer whatever carton but I built a pixelator grid a, cr a crude one out of cardboard uh, in there and so this is a viewer it has a little notch for your nose you put it up to your eyes hold up the light and you can see an image a pixelated image and so this will be the next craze you'll see people <laughs> on let's see Oh, they will be on one wheel, electric one wheels, <laughs> no. with vlogging cameras, <laughs> with pixelator grids in front of them, going like this down the streets of New York City, hmm. right? I don't think so, Joe. You don't think so? You don't think this is going to be the next thing? <laughs> I don't think so, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> well, on, They're interesting, though. They're interesting, yeah. I'm glad you showed them to me. So I think it's important to understand the context of the time in which I conceived of these ideas. Uh, so this was mid to late aughts, uh, 2007, 2008. This was a time when digital photography had begun to displace film photography, but the resolution of digital photography was such that it was common to see lower res kind of pixelated images. The idea of a pixelated digital image was still in the popular culture from 8-bit type of image files, etc. And so I began conceiving of the idea, could you make a pixelated image using strictly optics and physical simple processes like this? And I conceived of this idea that I called the pixelator cell. So at the time that I got enamored with the pixelator concept, I started looking around for sources of grids. I had made some of the cameras like this one, for instance, with my own little cardboard made grid, but it was a lot of work uh, for what it amounted to. And so I went around to like surplus stores and I found one of these diffuser, plastic diffusers for fluorescent overhead light fixtures. And I bought a big old panel of this stuff and brought it home and cut out a piece of this. And then I just uh, glued some translucent paper on the front side of it to serve as the uh, rear projection screen and that's what goes into this camera in the back of it and uh, then a piece of photo paper would go behind that so I was uh, there was a time when I was really in the market looking for grids big grids small grids I had actually envisioned doing an ultra large format a version of this project where you would have some enormous big size piece of photo paper and a big grid a diffuser grid like something like one of these to create this pixelated image I probably bit off more than I can chew and ended up getting distracted with other projects and never really made the ultra large format version of it but it certainly is a doable project and one of the interesting things about uh, the pixelator of course is uh, even though I call it a pinhole camera the hole like in this case the hole doesn't have to be any smaller than the size of the pixel like these are half inch square pixels roughly so a half inch square hole uh, you get a, a lot more light transmission through that but on the other hand you lose a lot of light because of the projection screen right it has to diffuse through that screen before it gets to the photo paper so the basic principle of the pixelator is you have a coherent image projected onto the, this front screen and then in this cell that coherent image is averaged out by the time the light gets to the back where the film or paper is. None of these pixelator cameras do a perfect job of averaging the light out uh, into a, an average level of gray. So there's still work to be done regarding that. Like maybe the inside walls of each cell should be some kind of should they be reflective material, like really reflective, or should they be all black? I mean, that's an interesting question. Because if you have a coherent image on a, on a pixel that has, it's almost all black, but one edge on the left side, let's say, is bright white, what you want is have an average grayscale by the time it hits the film without any evidence that there is this black and white 
thing in the front. So none of these configurations seem to do a perfect job of averaging the light out. So they're not really perfectly uniform pixels. There's still some hint of the image in front of it. So when I began studying the pixelator cell and figuring out why the there was this unevenness to each pixel, I realized that if you made the cells deeper, uh, the distance between the front projection screen and the film, if you made it deeper, then the light would have a better chance of averaging itself out to some middle gray or intermediate gray level, whatever it is. It was that idea of a deeper, thicker grid that led to another idea, which we'll be covering in a future video, which is the light pipe array. I think the pixelator phase of my photography was not as much about making images that would appeal to other people as realistic images. There is certainly a lot of abstraction in a, in a self-portrait <laughs> like that. It doesn't look like a person at all. It just looks like a bunch of gray squares of different shades. What really interested me in this whole thing, though, it was really about the concept of it more than how much of a usable image or how much of a recognizable image can it produce. And so this phase in my photography really wasn't about uh, making realistic images. It was really about the idea of it, the concept of it. Uh, what can you do to make a pixelated image? I think there is more work to be done though. I think you could work on this more and get bigger negatives, higher resolution, and perhaps get recognizable images out of it. But the, the concept of it fascinated me. It was really more about a theoretical photographic process than it was about actual usable images that are realistic. This is certainly, though, some kind of abstraction. It certainly passes for maybe abstract photography. Well, I'm Joe Van Cleve. I hope you found this interesting. Please leave comments, suggestions down below. I'd love to have a dialogue with you about these ideas. And if you have any questions about how to make these kind of cameras, drop a note, drop a message down below. I'd love to hear from you. And until next time, of course, as always, stay creative and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye.